I will look after my sheep, says the Lord, and I will appoint a shepherd to pasture them, and I, the Lord, will be their God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, shepherd and ruler of all the faithful, look favorably on your servant whom you have set at the head of your church of Buffalo as her shepherd. Grant, we pray, that by word and example he may be of service to those over whom he presides, so that together with the flock entrusted to his care he may come to everlasting life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul took 3,000 picked men from all Israel and went in search of David and his men in the direction of the wild goat crags. When he came to the sheepfolds along the way, he found a cave which he entered to relieve himself. David and his men were occupying the inmost recesses of the cave. David's servants said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy into your grasp. Do with him as you see fit. So David moved up and stealthily cut off the end of Saul's mantle. Afterward, however, David regretted that he had cut off an end of Saul's mantle. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master. The Lord's anointed as to lay a hand on him, for he is the Lord's anointed. With these words, David restrained his men and would not permit them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. David also stepped out of the cave, calling out to Saul, My Lord, the king. When Saul looked back, David bowed to the ground in homage and asked Saul, Why do you listen to those who say, David is trying to harm you? You see for yourself today that the Lord just now delivered you into my grasp in the cave. I had some thought of killing you, but I took pity on you instead. I decided I will not raise a hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed and a father to me. Look here at this end of your mantle, which I hold. Since I cut off an end of your mantle and did not kill you, see and be convinced that I plan no harm and no rebellion. I have done you no wrong, though you are hunting me down to take my life. The Lord will judge between me and you, and the Lord will exact justice from you in my case. I shall not touch you. The old proverb says, From the wicked comes forth wickedness. So I will take no action against you. Against whom are you on campaign, O king of Israel? Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog or a single flea? The Lord will be the judge. He will decide between me and you. May he see this and take my part and grant me justice beyond your reach. When David finished saying these things to Saul, 
Saul answered, Is that your voice, my son David? And Saul wept aloud. Saul then said to David, You are in the right rather than I. You have treated me generously, while I have done you harm. Great is the generosity you showed me today, when the Lord delivered me into your grasp, and you did not kill me. For if a man meets his enemy, does he send him away unharmed? May the Lord reward you generously for what you have done this day. And now I know that you shall surely be king, and that sovereignty over Israel shall come into your possession. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. In the shadow of your wings I take refuge, till harm pass by. I call to God the Most High, to God my benefactor. May he send from heaven and save me. May he make those a reproach who trample upon me. May God send his mercy and his faithfulness. Be exalted above the heavens, O God, for above all the earth be your glory. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James, whom he named Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. John, the brother of James, whom he named Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder. So the the two brothers together, John and James, uh, sons of Zebedee. We've been hearing these recruitment stories all week long. Jesus walking along the seashore, calling them to come and follow him. We heard in the Gospel of John those same stories on the weekends. We read from John during the season of Christmas and Easter and the special seasons. So we've been hearing all of these stories, calling them off the boat. They follow immediately. Sons of Thunder. You just Scripture doesn't tell us why he called them that. You just have to kind of fill it in on your own, just from your reading of the characters. Uh, they probably were like two typical brothers. They, they brawled about everything, <laughs> argued, trying to outdo each other. So it's a, a perhaps kind of a humorous nickname. One nickname that is not humorous is the one he gives to Simon, whom he named Peter. Uh, this is Mark's gospel. Uh, Matthew is the only one that tells us about that conversation in which Jesus says, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. But it's in all the other gospels. We heard in the gospel of John uh, a couple of weeks ago that you uh, you are 
you are named Simon, you are Simon the son of John, but you will be called Kephas. And Kephas is the Hebrew word for rock. And here he's saying it um, again. Um, so that was John's gospel. Mark says right here, he renamed Simon Peter. All of them make it very clear that Peter was the rock on which the church was built. And we are that church. You know, I've certainly gone over this often enough. But can you go over it often enough? We, we get attacked by so many people over so many things, and you know everybody's predicting our downfall and we're going to go away. It's impossible because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, founded us, the Catholic Church, on the rock of Peter, the first pope, and promised that the gates of the netherworld would not prevail against us. This is what keeps me going every day, folks, because I just know that we're going to outlast all of this trouble and punch through and get to a brighter day. Um, Simon, whom he named Peter. This gives us hope. Let us stand and pray together. We pray for the mission of the church to evangelize all nations and baptize them into the glory of the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. For all bishops and priests, we pray especially for our pastor of the family, Leon Burnett, for our bishop, Michael Fisher, people who make many decisions that, that we're often unaware of, uh, important decisions that affect many people. We pray for their uh, building up in the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the continued protection of all those out in stormy and uh, snowy elements and dangerous roads. We pray for the uh, first responders, medical teams who by this point are, are probably very tired. May God sustain them in keeping us all safe. We pray to the Lord. We pray that those who have left the practice of the faith may return to the grace of the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Let us pause and call to mind the personal prayers that we bring to the altar today. For these needs, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, and especially the many souls who are buried from our parish in this first month of the year. May God's love and mercy surround them in their purification. We pray to the Lord. For Natalie and James Kayser, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, you know all our needs, and so we place them confidently in your hands, surrendering all things to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which we have presented for your servant, Michael Fisher, become an offering acceptable to you, and for the good of the flock, may he whom you have raised up among your people to be high priest, be endowed by your gift with apostolic virtues, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Father most holy through your beloved Son Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection and so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the communion at fun. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, O Lord, increase the gifts of your grace in Michael Fisher, your servant and our bishop, that he may serve you worthily in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal rewards of a faithful steward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Amen. In every age, O God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.